Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind The Country Chic Cottage. Cricut recently released printable iron-on, one for light fabrics and one for dark fabrics. So I thought I would put this to the test today and see how it works on some shirts. And yes, this is going to include a laundry test so you can see just how long it lasts. Now this material is for inkjet printers with regular inkjet ink. So it doesn't use sublimation, it just uses regular ink in your home printer. So if you don't have a sublimation printer or you want to experiment with other materials, this might be something you want to pick up. Now there is one for light and one for dark fabrics. And I will cover what each of those are for and put them on a variety of surfaces so you can see. And the file that I'm going to use for this is sort of a watercolor paw print that is on the shirt that I have on. And I will link to a free file for it in the description below this video. That way you can print it and use it on your projects as well. This would even be great for sublimation. So first let's take a look at the supplies we're going to use. The two products we're going to test are the Cricut Printable Iron-On for light fabrics and Printable Iron-On for dark fabrics. Now I'm going to use this color of the Bella Canvas shirt to do my test. I'm going to put both the light and the dark on here so you can see the difference on sort of a medium color fabric. The light version is meant for white or very light fabrics and then for everything else you would use the dark but I do want to use this shirt as an example just to show you what would happen if you did use the light. Now you also need an inkjet printer. Both of these are made for inkjet printers. So it's an inkjet printer with the ink that it comes in installed. No sublimation, no laser printers. This is made for an inkjet printer. We're going to take a look inside these and see what comes with both of these packages. However, you'll also need a Cricut machine and a heat source. So I am going to use my Cricut Easy Press for this and the Easy Press mat. The printable iron-on for light fabrics comes with one pressing sheet and five sheets of the printable iron-on. You can tell the version for light fabrics because it has the grid with the green lines on the back and the Cricut logo. The printable iron-on for dark fabrics again comes with one pressing sheet and then it only comes with three sheets of the dark printable iron-on. And it will have on the back this sticker with a QR code that will give you instructions. That's how you tell the back. So you print on the front side of both these. So the opposite side from the QR code for the dark version and the opposite side of the green grid for the light version. So print on the solid white side of both of these. So you do need to be sure that you know which side your printer prints on before adding this to your printer. And just one more time to note, the light has five sheets in the package and the dark only has three. Click upload, upload image, browse and then find the image on your computer. I have done that and saved mine as a print and cut image and I'm gonna go ahead and add to canvas. You could print this just like this and cut it, but the first method I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna use an offset. So I'm gonna go ahead and add an offset to it, make it a little larger, click apply, and then I'm gonna click the offset, make it a basic cut, click contour, hide all contours so that it's just one piece. Then I'm gonna make the contour white, and then I'm gonna pick everything and click flatten. Now the sheets are eight and a half by 11 inches, so I would need to resize this somewhat to get it where it would fit on the sheet. In fact, this is still a little too large, so I'm gonna go ahead and let it auto resize the image. And I am gonna make a couple copies and we're gonna click make it. Now you can see these on the screen as a print and cut image. I'm gonna go ahead and click continue and I'm gonna send to printer. Remember that this can only be used with the inkjet printer. It cannot be used with the laser printer and you do not mirror the design. So you do not want to mirror it. Because I made my offset white, I'm gonna remove the bleed and click use system dialog and print. This screen will look different depending on the printer that you have, but you do wanna look for a few different things. For media type, I like to do a photo paper generally and change quality to best quality. Then I'm gonna go ahead and print this on both the printable iron-on for light fabrics as well as the printable iron-on for dark fabrics so that we can compare the two. Here are both of those after printing. The top is the one for light fabric, so it has a green grid on the back. Now all of these were completely dry once they came out of my inkjet printer. 
The bottom one is the one for dark fabrics and they both fed through the printer fine and the prints are gorgeous and they both look the same as far as the prints at this stage. Now I'm going to apply both of these. I'm gonna show you the application process for both. Now we're gonna cut both of these and apply both of them to the same shirt so you can see the differences. I'm using my Cricut Joy to cut this. However, you can use any Cricut machine and you'll wanna place the printable iron-on onto the mat in the same orientation that is located in Cricut Design Space. Pick the printable iron-on light material for the light and the dark material for the dark. Then press go to cut. The Cricut machine will read the registration marks first locate your cut, and then cut around your design. I'm gonna cut the rest of my sheets and we'll talk about application. Now that the material's done cutting, we do need to weed the material. So we're gonna go ahead and remove it from the mat. And then this is the version for dark fabrics and I'm just going to start in the corner and peel it back. And you can see that this is a white material that is, I mean, not too thick, but fairly thick. In comparison with the version for light, and I'm gonna do it in the same way. So this one is already cut. Just peel back the corner. So this material is very thin. So you can see, you can see even the ink through it. Whereas on the white, you could not. And it is very, very thin. And the backing paper for the light is basically like a paper, whereas this is more of a carrier sheet. So now we have them both weeded. The application process is basically the same for both, but let's walk through it. The settings for both the light and the dark are 315 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 seconds, and I have my Easy Press heating up. I've added my shirt to my Easy Press mat, and like I said, I'm gonna apply the light and the dark to this kind of medium color shirt so we can see the difference. The application process is basically the same, but I'm gonna walk through it. So you're gonna preheat the material about five seconds. For this material, and the reason we added the offset, is that you need to peel it back from the backing and apply it by hand to your surface. So this material, like I said, the light is very thin, so be careful not to rip it. We're gonna peel it back, and then we'll just locate it right onto the shirt. And you would locate it into location. This shirt, obviously I'm not gonna wear because I'm gonna put kind of paws all over it as tests, but if you were gonna wear it, you would locate it correctly. Then there's a pressing sheet that comes with the material in both cases, and you're gonna put that over the top. And this does call for firm pressure. So 315 degrees, 30 seconds, firm pressure, pressing down the entire time. Once the time's up, we'll lift that up. Then you lift your pressing sheet back. You are gonna allow this to cure for 48 hours before you wash it. And when you wash it, you're gonna wash it inside out, cold water, hang to dry. Now this was for the light and you can kind of tell that this purple of this shirt is coming through. So the outline isn't white and the colors have kind of changed. Let's press the dark and you can see the difference and I'm gonna press it just right below the light and we're gonna use the same method. So preheat for about five seconds, peel the printable iron on for dark from the backing paper. This is not as thin, but I would still be careful, don't rip it or anything and then we'll apply it to the shirt. Again, you would put it in the correct location normally, but I just want these close together for this demonstration. And then the sheet that comes in the package over the top, 315 degrees, 30 seconds, firm pressure. Once you're done, we'll lift that up, peel that sheet back, and you can already see a huge difference between the two. So there are the two side by side. This one for light, this one for dark. So there is a huge difference when applied to a shirt that has a color. 
This one, when applied to white, of course the white would just show through, so it would look similar to this version. However, if you're gonna put it on a shirt with any color in it, that color is gonna show through this version for light. The dark version will block any color from showing through. So now I'm gonna make another shirt exactly like this one, and I am going to wait 48 hours, and I'm going to wash one of the shirts several times to do some tests. Let's put both of these to the test and see how long they last. Let's talk about if you don't want to add the offset. This is that same file, no offset added, and I went ahead and printed it. This is on the dark, but the light is the same process, and I cut it with my Cricut Joy Extra just like before, and weeded everything away. And you can see that this is in five pieces. The first thing I wanna say is that a heat transfer mask or basically transfer tape for HDV is not recommended for this product. They say that it can pull up the ink that is applied to the surface. I did have to test that, however, just to see what would happen. So I put this on a dark background so possibly you could see it. So this is a heat transfer mask and I transferred something I printed on the light. And if you'll see all these small white dots on the surface of this, that is all where the ink was lifted off the surface as I transferred it. So I do agree and I do not recommend using this with these products. This was the result of the one I used the heat transfer mask with. So this is on a shirt. And if you'll see these white dots in here, and there are several white dots in this paw here. And that is where the adhesive from the heat transfer mask just pulled the ink off. And I used several different techniques, peeled hot, peeled cold, still had the same result. The other thing with the heat transfer mask, I didn't get as good of an adhesion. So some of the edges are actually lifting up on this. So I would definitely say that heat transfer mask does not work. So you might not want to get very intricate with your design. However, with this design, we could probably add this to a shirt by hand. So let's take a look at how to do that. I am gonna follow a similar process. So we're gonna put the shirt on the Easy Press mat. Go ahead and preheat the surface. And then I'm gonna transfer this design by hand. So I'm gonna transfer each of the pieces by peeling them from the backing paper and placing them on the shirt in location. Because this is a simple design, this will definitely work. This is why I say you may wanna stay with simple designs with this product or add the offset for more complicated designs. Once you have this just like you want it on the shirt, again, we'll cover with the pressing paper and then press 315 degrees, 30 seconds. And once again, we'll peel that pressing sheet back. So let's take a look at some comparisons of this product on a few different shirts. So here's that original shirt with the one for light and dark fabrics. I did want to show you if you added the light fabrics to a light shirt, comparing, say, the yellow, how much more it would pop on a white or very light color shirt. So this product definitely, you can see the shirt color through it. So you would only want to use it on light color shirts or if you wanted a vintage type of effect here. Now the feel of these products is similar, but I kind of like the feel of the dark one a little bit better. So I wouldn't necessarily use this just for the feel of the product. And you could put the product for dark fabrics on a lighter fabric. However, the dark version is more expensive. So you might want to consider the light product. And we'll go ahead and compare the color on these. And you can see it is very, very similar on a light versus a dark shirt. So you could definitely use the light product or the less expensive product on white or very light color shirts. Now with the product, again, you can add the offset, but with the product for dark fabrics, you will have this white outline around it. If you don't want the white outline, so this version here, you would need to place each of the items individually as I've shown, because heat transfer mask does damage the surface of this product. So you would wanna choose simpler designs or live with the offset have it all one piece, have the white outline around it. This is the shirt that has not been in the laundry at all. And then this shirt, I ran through the laundry 15 times. So a total of 15 times. And I did them all according to the directions. So inside out, cold water, hang to dry. You can see that while it's faded, some, 
it still looks fairly good and it is not peeling up at all. Everything looks really good on the shirt that I ran through the laundry. And I will say basically faded pretty slowly over time. It did not fade all at once. So I feel like this product really did impress me. Um, I was expecting it not to even last the 15 wash cycles, just to be honest. So if you are looking for a product to use with your inkjet printer, this might just be the product for you. So now, is this product worth it? I will say I was pretty impressed with it. I have used other printable iron-on and printable HTV, and it's been hit or miss, like whether I like it or whether I don't. If you only have an inkjet printer, I do feel like that this is a great alternative. Now the feel on the shirt, I mentioned it, it feels like an HTV would. And I do kind of like the feel of the material for dark fabrics better than the material for light, and I thought it would be opposite. However, I did like the feel better of the product for the dark fabric. And as far as like how long they last, I feel like both of them were equal. So what I mentioned in this video still stands. I feel like the light fabric, I would only use it on white or very light surfaces. And I would only use it because it's less expensive. Otherwise, just get the material for the dark fabrics, especially if you catch it on sale. And you could use it both on both light and dark fabrics. So does this beat sublimation? In my opinion, it does not. I would still turn to sublimation for things like polyester garments. However, if you have a cotton garment and you want to use your inkjet printer, this might be an alternative that works well. Probably last around the same amount of time as something like a Caesar Easy Subly would. Caesar Easy Subly might last a little longer, but overall it would probably be the same type of material. So definitely is a great option for those of you that want to add photos and other things to shirts. And you might want to give this product a try for yourself. So if you have any questions about the printable iron-on from Cricut, please drop down in the comment section and ask away. If you like this video, if it helped you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We have videos just like this one every single week, and trust me, you don't want to miss any of those. So thank you all so much for joining me. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.